Guys, we're going to talk about my five top do's and don'ts of the Ninja Wolf Fire Grill. Y'all, I've been wanting to do this video for a little while. I have a big Facebook group uh, for the Ninja Wolf Fire products, and these are some of the things that come up the most often in those groups. So this is kind of like a review, but not really. These are just some of my do's and don'ts that I want to share with y'all. So let's go ahead and get started on this one. What do you say? The first do, guys make sure you wash that grill plate or the griddle plate if you have it. I do it after every cook. Listen, it's non-stick. It's easy to wash and you're not trying to build up some kind of flavor on there like, you know, how they talk about on regular barbecue grills. So, you know, on your, your kettle grill grates or your pellet grills or whatever, scrape it off, but you know, you leave some flavor on there, right? Put on those grill plates, they're easy to wash every time. Okay, so make sure you do that. But a don't would be Worrying about cleaning the whole inside of that grill. You're never gonna get it all that clean. Now I have a video on how to clean your wood fire grill right here, plug. But guys, I let the inside get dirty. It's okay to let that creosote kind of build up in there a little bit. You can do your, you know, quarterly cleaning on it or something like that, but guys, I, it, it's gonna get dirty. It's, you know, the grease, the splatter, the smoke, all that stuff. It's okay. It's not touching your food. It's not gonna create some off putting flavor in there. Clean that grill plate, but don't worry about cleaning, you know, the inside so much. It's, it's, you know, it's a pain in the neck. All right. I'll just be honest with you. And I don't, you know, sit there and clean all the insides of all my other grills all the time either. You know, we do those those good spring cleanings a couple times a year, but don't worry about getting it all inside. Remember there used to be a tree right here when I filmed. All right, weather in SoCal has been a little bit crazy lately. Got a lot of rain, the tree went into the pool. It happens, we're gonna get a new one. We will rebuild. If that's the worst thing that happened to me, we're good to go, all right? All right, our next do is to let your wood fire run through the ignition process. In my earlier videos, when I just first got the wood fire grill, I would put the meat on immediately hit the wood fire button, hit the start, all that stuff. And it would let it go through the ignition process while having the meat in there. Now there's a couple times where that might work out okay if you're doing a big hunk of meat and you just wanna just hammer it with smoke. But for the most part, I let it go through the ignition process. It helps kind of burn off that quick deal of uh, heavy white smoke in there. All right, that sometimes can be a little bitter, sometimes can be a little acrid. It's up to you if you wanna do it or not. But for me, it's a do. We do let it <laughs> burn out, okay? Don't use wood chips in there. It's a pellet cooker. It requires pellets to get that smoke. So do not try to put wood chips in there. I get asked that question constantly, all day, every day. Okay, don't use wood chips in it. Pellets are made to catch a little bit of ignition and then smolder. The wood chips, if they catch a little bit of ignition, they catch fire. And you don't want fire in that pellet hopper, okay? So use pellets. The next do is do cook to internal temperatures. Do not try to time out your cooks. If you're smoking something, inevitably it's gonna take longer than you think. When I do my videos, I try to give you a guideline of about how long it takes, but I'm in a different area than you, right? Different elevation, different climates, all that stuff. So always cook to internal temperatures. Now, how do you do that? Well, we have two ways of cooking to internal temperatures. One is the temp spike or the temp spike plus, or the twin temp spikes. <laughs> I've used them all in my videos. These are Bluetooth wireless thermometers that work in the grills very well. I use these all the time. You'll see them in all my videos. So link down below if you wanna check these out. You save a little bit of cash with my, uh, my link. Grab one of these or, and, and or, right? Grab a Thermapro Lightning Instant Read Thermometer. So this helps you check the temps, see the little temp probe. It's quick, it's instant, right? That's why it's an instant read thermometer, but it helps you keep track of the temps as you go. So if you do not have the Ninja Wolf Fire that has the temperature probe, honestly, even if you do, I would still get one of these. The Ninja Temp Probe will give you a, a guideline of where you're at as far as temps go, but I find these things are a little bit more reliable. So that's just my opinion. Take it for what it's worth, but I swear by these things. So like I said, links down below, you can save a little bit of cash using my link. The next don't, don't do this. Please don't do this. Don't use your wood fire grill indoors, especially with pellets, because you're gonna smoke out your house. The reason being, there's no containment in there really for any kind of smoke. So even if you're like cooking a steak, cooking bacon, whatever, like in your normal like 
indoor grills that have a kind of an enclosed lid where it has a fan, all that stuff, where the smoke's kind of dissipating in there. On the wood fire grill, there's a direct vent that sends any kind of smoke outside. You're putting it on your counter or whatever, you're gonna be having smoke go out of it, okay? You're grilling, uh, supposedly, at high heat indoors, right? And all that's gonna do is send smoke out. I did a little short video, I was cooking some bacon in it, and you could see the smoke just coming out. I was outdoors, but you could see the smoke coming outdoors, and I said that's why you don't use it indoors, and I still get comments to this day. I, I use mine indoors all the time. Again, that's your choice, but if you have to take it indoors and put it on your stove and put your you know, vent on to take all the smoke out, that you're just doing extra work there. If you need a vent that takes the smoke outside for your air fryer, you probably gotta, it's not a good idea, right? Right. I know you guys are gonna comment down below that you use yours indoors, and that's all good, that's you. But me personally, and I suggest you don't either, don't use it indoors. Do keep your outdoor grill outdoors. A question I get, should you keep your Ninja Wood Fire grill outdoors? Yes, you see all my grills here. I have grills for days. You know what they all have in common? They all have covers on them. And so do all my ninjas, okay? So you put a cover on them. I just, I just rained this morning, okay? As the sun came out, it's a beautiful day now. Just rained this morning, so guys, it's good to go. I keep my grills outside all year round. If you're in some heavy duty snow, you know, you got a shed, you might want to put them in there. But guys, I don't stress about it. I don't move it inside and outside. I just keep it covered, okay? So uh, if you guys need a cover for your wood fire grill, my Ninja affiliate link is down below. Uh, you can click on that and find you a cover. Don't question whether you should use Ninja pellets or not. I use any food safe pellets. It even says so in the instruction guide. You do not have to use Ninja specific pellets. I know they come with a little bag when you get your Ninja Wood Fire Grill, but you use them, use them up, go buy whatever you want, as long as it's a food safe pellet. I've used Traeger, I've used Pit Boss, I've used Smoking Pecan. I actually work with Bear Mountain Barbecue and their pellets, and they actually produce Ninja's pellets. So. You use what you like. You're gonna use the smoker a few times. You're gonna get the idea of what you like. I use fruit woods for lighter meats like chicken and pork. And then I use like cherry, pecan, um, hickory, whatever for the heavier cuts like brisket, uh, steaks, whatever, okay? So you guys just kind of learn the way you like your pellets, but you do not have to use Ninja pellets. The last most important do for you, do grab my Ninja Wood Fire Grill cookbooks. They're e-cookbooks. They're downloadable. Got about 80 recipes for you, right? Between the various cookbooks. Perfect for the Ninja Wolf Art Grill. Easy to follow, easy to use, easy to make awesome dishes. They're $5 each or $15 for all four. Guys, that stuff helps out the channel. That's why I produce them. And it helps you guys make better dishes for your family, right? For all my friends across the pond or up north, all the temperatures are in Celsius and Fahrenheit, so they're a little easier to follow along. I still use American measurements, uh, cups, teaspoons, tablespoons, all that stuff. But you can Google that stuff if you need to get them to what you guys use, okay? But they're simple to use, so make sure you grab them. I know a lot of you guys have, and you've uh, said great things about them, so I appreciate that. Team, we've okay. come to the end of our journey of the do's and don'ts. Y'all take some time and put your do's and don'ts in the comments down below, right? Maybe I can learn something. Y'all are using it all the time too? Throw the comments down below. Hit that thumbs up if you like my do's and don'ts or the thumbs down twice if you don't. But other than that, we are done. Guys, if you wanna become a show producer, like all these awesome ninjas scrolling in front of you right now, people that you know wanna help out the channel, be a part of CJ's crew for real, be a show producer, right? There are two ways to join up. You can hit my Patreon link in the video description, or you can hit that join button right next to the subscribe button, which you should have already hit by now. But other than that, we guys, we're done. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thanks for stopping by, and thanks for uh, chatting with CJ. Take care.